Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In this next topic, we look at the economics of business, how businesses make decisions and why they make the decisions they do make. But first, what is a business? We sometimes think of businesses as great big factories, long production lines like this car production factory over here. But here's a simpler business. It's still a business. We've got capital, the knife, inputs, coconuts, and we've got labour, producing a product that someone wants to buy on the streets of Bombay. We're going to take a simple but general approach to a business. A business is simply going to be an organisation that takes some inputs and transforms those inputs into outputs. The inputs may include, for example, labour, equipment, raw materials such as iron ore, products from other businesses such as steel, and so on. The outputs fall into two groups. They could be goods and services that consumers want and are willing to pay for, or the outputs might be goods and services that become inputs for other businesses. For example, a steel mill would take iron ore as an input and would produce steel, which will probably be used as an input for other businesses, such as a car manufacturer. There are many ways to organise a business. The businesses we're going to be looking in in this course are going to be profit-maximising businesses. Now, they're not the only sort of businesses. We have businesses, for example that are owned and run by the government. We have businesses that are not-for-profits, that are involved in charitable sectors, or, for example, that might act on the for the benefit of their members. The members may be workers, they may be, say, farmers, or they may be buyers. But the sort of businesses we're going to be considering in this course are going to want to maximise their profits. And in this presentation, we're going to start thinking about how a business does maximise its profits. Just one final example before we get started. Many of you watching this video will be involved with a business. You're part of a production process. If you're watching this as part of a Monash University course, then that business, Monash University, is actually government-owned. If you're watching from another university, then it may be that that university is a not-for-profit institution or it may be a for-profit university. The relevant output is just over here on the side. So our first step in this course, where we're only looking at profit-maximising businesses, is to ask a simple question. How does a business maximise its profit? To answer that question, we're going to have to look at the mathematics of profit. Okay, if you really hate mathematics, go forward a couple of presentations until we start looking at the diagrams. But if you can handle a bit of mathematics, then it makes it a lot easier. As I've already noted, total profit or total economic profit is simply total revenue minus total cost. As is always the case in economics, we're talking about total opportunity cost. Let's start off by looking at total revenue. Total revenue is simply the total amount you receive for selling goods and services. We're going to assume that that's just in dollars or in monetary terms. And we're also going to assume that you sell all of your output at a uniform price or a single price P. So we're just going to look at the return in dollars and we're going to assume that the business sells all its output for a uniform or a single price for each unit sold. The alternative, which is called price discrimination, we'll look at briefly later on in the course. So if you sell QI units at a uniform price of P per unit, your total revenue will just be the price per unit times the number of units sold. 
For example, if the price is, let's say, $1.10 per unit, and you manage to sell, let's say, 99 units, then your total revenue is just $10 times 99 units, which is $990. We can also define average revenue. Average revenue is simply going to be equal to the total revenue divided by the total amount you sell, QI, and that's pretty obviously going to be, well, price times quantity divided by quantity. That just brings us back to our uniform price P. So the average revenue for a business is just going to be the uniform price P that it charges for each unit it sells. We can also define marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is simply the change in total revenue when you make and sell one more unit. The marginal revenue of a business will depend on the control that a business has over its price. Let's take the simplest example first. If a business is a price taker, in other words, if a business has no control over the price it sets, then the marginal revenue is just going to be equal to the price. How can we see that? Well, if you're a price taking firm, and let's say that your price is $10 a unit, then by definition, you can sell as much or as little of the good as you like at that price of $10. You can't charge a higher price. If you charge a higher price, you'll make no sales. If you charge a lower price, then everybody's going to come to your store and you're going to have people lined up for miles outside. So if you're a price-taking firm, your price will be $10 if you sell one unit. If you sell another unit, you get an extra $10. If you sell another unit, you get an extra $10. If you sell 3,000 units and are making $30,000 and you want to sell another unit, well, you get $30,000 and $10 total revenue. Your revenue goes up by $10 every time you sell one more unit. So if a business is a price taker, marginal revenue is equal to the price. More generally, marginal revenue is going to be well, the derivative of total revenue with regards to the quantity, or that's just a fancy way of saying the change in total revenue with a change in quantity. That's just our definition. Well, it's going to be given by this formula here. What's this formula mean? Well, notice that it's got the price again. When you sell an extra unit for $10, you get an extra $10. If you sell an extra unit for $100, you get an extra $100. If you sell an extra unit for a million dollars, you get an extra million dollars. So clearly, part of marginal revenue, the change in total revenue when you sell one more unit, part of that has got to be equal to the price. But what on earth is this bit over here? Think about the situation where you have some control over your price. To convince consumers to buy more of your product, you have to drop the price. This term captures the drop the price effect. We've got the quantity that you're selling, and then we've got this other term here, which is simply the change in the price that you charge for all the units you sell when you want to sell one more unit. And this term over here is going to be negative. First thing to note, for a price-taking firm, they don't have to drop the price to sell any more units. So the amount that they have to drop the price to sell one more unit is just zero. And so for a price taker, marginal revenue is just price, as we've already seen. Second point to note, this formula has our assumption about a uniform price built in. It tells us that if we want to sell one more unit, we have to drop the price P that we charge on every unit. So our revenue goes down 
not just because we charge a lower price on the last unit we sell, but because in order to convince consumers to buy more of our product, we have to drop the price on all the units we sell. Look at a simple example. Suppose that our business can sell 100 units if we set the price at $10 per unit. But if we want to sell one more unit, if we want to sell 101 units, we have to convince that 101 consumer to buy, they're not going to buy at $10, so we have to drop the price a bit. We may have to drop the price down to $9.95 in order to sell 101 units. So we can ask a simple question. What happens to total revenue if we sell the extra unit? Or in other words, what's our marginal revenue? Well, let's work it out. Let's start up here with the first situation where we sell 100 units. Our total revenue, if we sell 100 units, is simply going to be our price, $10 per unit, times our quantity, which is 100. So our total revenue is going to be $1,000. What about in our second situation? In our second situation, well, in that situation, we're selling each unit at only $9.95, so our price has gone down. We remember we had to do that to convince the 101th person to buy the unit, but our sales have gone up. We're selling an extra unit, 101 units. So our total revenue in that situation, you can work it out using your calculator if you wish, it's $1,004.95. So in this situation, our marginal revenue, our change in total revenue, when we sell the 101th unit of our product, is just, well, the change in total revenue is $1,004.95, Minus $1,000, our marginal revenue is just $4.95. That, you'll notice, is less than the price. The price is $9.95. Our marginal revenue is only $4.95. Why? Let's break this marginal revenue into two bits. The first bit is the actual price that we get for the 101th unit. Remember, we're selling one more unit. We sell that unit for $9.95. So part of our marginal revenue has got to be the $9.95 we make on that extra unit. We get the price, P. But clearly we can't stop there. When we drop the price to $9.95, we reduce the price not just on the last unit, but on all the units we sell. So we were selling 100 units at $10 per unit. We're now selling those same 100 units. Sure, we're selling one extra, but we're selling 101 units. We're still selling those original 100 units. But no longer are we charging $10, we're now charging $9.95. Or in other words, we've lost $0.05 cents on every one of those 100 units. So our revenue has gone down by 100 times $0.05. Cents. And 100 times $0.05 cents is, of course, just equal to $5. But that's a negative it's a loss or a reduction in $5. So what's our marginal revenue? Well, it's the price that we get on the extra unit that we sell minus or take away the reduction in price on all the units that we could have sold at a high price but are now selling a little bit cheaper. $9.95 minus $5, that gives us exactly $4.95. Finally, how do we write this second term mathematically? Well, that's pretty easy. Notice that it's just our quantity, our original quantity, or what we sometimes now call our inframarginal quantity of 100. It's that quantity, Q, times the reduction in price 
that we had to make in order to sell one more unit. And that's the second term in our marginal revenue equation. So our general formula for marginal revenue of a change in total revenue when we want to sell one more unit is the price that we charge when we sell that extra unit plus the loss of revenue when we drop the price in order to sell that one more unit, the loss of revenue on all the units we could have sold at a higher price, on our inframarginal units. And as already noted, that term is just zero for a price-taking firm. So for a price-taking firm, marginal revenue is the price. If you're a price maker, if you have to drop the price in order to sell more units, this will be negative. And so for a firm that isn't a price taker, for a firm that has some latitude in setting its price, marginal revenue will be less than the price that it charges when it sells one more unit. That'll do for today. Talk to you next time.